Hey everyone, you know when we sometimes read scripture, we come across things that we might not understand at first. One of these things that happened was when Jesus sent demons into pigs. Why did he do it? Did you know? Well, this is the question I'm going to answer in this video. So get yourself ready. It's going to be an interesting one. Let's get to it. Just very quick, if it's the first time that you're here, my name is Daniel and welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle, where we preach biblical teaching. We stick to the Bible, so if that's what you're looking for, then remember to subscribe and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of our future videos. Now, why did Jesus allow demons to go into pigs? Well, let's first read the passage where it happened to understand the context better. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. He lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart, and he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. So here we see that demons can do supernatural things through people who they possess. Verse 5. Night and day, among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. This is sad for this man. He did not have a life. He was a slave to the demons inside of him. Verse 6. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. Now this shows us that the demons knew exactly who Jesus was and that even though they were many and powerful, they had to fall down before Jesus. It shows us the authority that God has over demons. Now listen to this. Verse 7, And crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he was saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. Now just so you understand here, at that time, a legion was the biggest unit in the army of the Romans. And he was between 3,000 to 6,000 men. So this man had thousands of demons inside of him. And yet, they bowed down before Jesus. Verse 10, And he begged them earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. And they begged him, saying, Send us to the pigs, let us enter them. You see, demons want to live inside a person. That's their home. I've seen this a lot growing up, seeing my dad, helping people who were demon-possessed. You know my story, I've already talked about it in a few videos. Demons want to be inside a person, they want to hide there, they don't want to reveal themselves. So a lot of people don't even know that they have demons inside of them. Until, that is, when you talk about the fundamental truths of Scripture, like the crucifixion of Jesus and that His blood set us free. They don't like to hear those kind of things, the truth. And that's why sometimes they would come out, they would manifest in the person while they are in church, when the true gospel is being preached in the Spirit. Let's continue. Verse 13, So he gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs. And the herd, numbering about 2,000, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the sea. The herdsmen fled and told it in the city and in the country. And people came to see what it was that had happened. And they came to Jesus and saw the demon-possessed man, the one who had had the legion, sitting there, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. They were afraid because for years they saw this man, what he did, that he lived among the tombstones. And they even tried to, try, to kind of control him by chaining him down. And he broke it. They saw how strong he was. And now there came another man who just came to free him like that. Jesus made him free. And now this man is sitting there normal. 
They were afraid of the power of Jesus. Verse 16, And those who had seen it described to them what had happened to the demon-possessed man and to the pigs. And they began to beg Jesus to depart from their region. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed with demons begged him that he might be with him. And he did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone marveled. Now, why did Jesus send them into the pigs, the demons? Well, first we see that the demons asked him to do it. And so he allowed it. But we don't know why he allowed it because the Bible does not tell us. It's not clear on that. But there could be a few reasons. And this is not from Scripture. This is what I believe. Because of the experience I had with demon possession, not being demon possessed myself, but growing up with my dad, seeing how he freed people and then later joined him to do it. Demons do not like to be out in the open. They like to hide in people. That is their home. That's where they live. They prefer to live in flesh and to hide there. Matthew 12 verse 43 says, When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest, but finds none. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house empty, swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. This is also why you can't really help people who do not want to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord. Because their house, their soul stays empty. It has to be filled with Jesus Christ. And they have to ask God for forgiveness for the sins that they have done. The, the, the evil spirits so that they don't have a foothold on that person. But now let's go back to the demons and the pigs. They probably asked Jesus to allow them to go into the pigs because they didn't want to leave the area. That might be another reason. Remember, they've lived there for years in that person, just causing chaos, havoc, and they didn't want to leave. And one other reason might also be because they wanted to escape God's punishment because they knew God already threw some demons into darkness. He did that with the demons who overstepped their boundaries. Jude 1 verse 6 says, And the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal change under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day. The demons knew that God would judge all of them at the final judgment day and throw them all in hell. Maybe they wondered, maybe Jesus wanted to do this earlier with them. So they wondered if Jesus came to cast them out of the man into eternal darkness, into chains, before the final judgment. Listen to this, Matthew 8 verse 29. Suddenly they shouted, What do you have to do with us, Son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? You see, they knew Jesus had all the power and they were guilty. Apart from rebelling against God, when all the fallen angels rebelled, apart from that, just think about what they did to this poor man for years. But I want you to listen. Don't be afraid of demons or the devil. We can rest assured that God has all the power over the enemy and they cannot do anything without him allowing them to do it. Jesus said in Matthew 28 verse 18, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, why did Jesus allow them to go into pigs, specifically pigs of all creatures? Well, the Bible doesn't give us a specific answer, but there could be a few different reasons for this. Number one is because pigs lived in dirt. They were dirty animals. And for the Jews, they were unclean. And you know what is unclean as well? demons because they are called unclean spirits. For example, Mark 1 verse 23 says, And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. Revelation 18 verse 2, And he called out with a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. 
She has become a dwelling place for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit. Matthew 10 verse 1, And He called to Him His twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. So the pigs were unclean, dirty animals, just like the demons, unclean spirits. But now, why did they run into the water and die? Well, again, we don't know. It could be because God wanted to show them the end result of darkness, which is death. Evil only brings death. When people are under the influence of evil spirits, these evil spirits, they just want to destroy. They bring destruction. You can see the way this man lived for years among the tombstones. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. The devil and other demons are not something that we should take lightly. But we also should not be afraid. Because God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, a sound mind, and self-control. This is very important to understand. Never to be afraid. Because we as children of God, we have received the Holy Spirit in us. And through the Holy Spirit in us, we now have the authority to rebuke the devil and any demons. 1 John 4 verse 4 says, Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And James 4 verse 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And then Luke 10 verse 19 says, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Now remember, you are in a spiritual war, whether you like it or not. And it's going to stay that way until the day you die, until Jesus comes again and He just sorts out everything. Even when you have encounters with people that just seem evil, it's not people. Our fight is not against flesh and blood. Listen to this. Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Now, there are some people who go crazy about these things. They focus so much about these things that they forget about the rest of Scripture. They focus on things about the angels, the demons, the end times. And yes, these things are interesting and you should know them. But God wants you to focus on living for Him. To focus on sharing the gospel in boldness, in truth and in love. And never fear evil. Always trust God. And always remember... 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Now, this is important. Never give the devil any foothold in your life. Live holy, live righteous, and live with God in the Spirit. Everything that you should do in this world should be done through faith. And if you want to know how to be filled, with the Holy Spirit and watch this video here and I'll see you there. And always remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be constant.